a former top prospect for the Reds has one last shot this season. Jose Barrero has the tools, but is he going to be able to execute them? You are locked on Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on Reds, your daily source for all things Cincinnati Reds. I'm Stephen Offenbaker, and he's Jeff Carr, and we love baseball, and we love these Cincinnati Reds, and we have taken that love for the game and that love for this team, and we have turned it into information for you. Locked on Reds is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On today's podcast, we are going to take a look at what will be Jose Barrero's last chance to not only salvage his time in Cincinnati, but possibly his baseball career as a professional overall. Uh, we're going to be talking rankings as well. There are several new lists out, and we will discuss which Reds are ranked where. And also, here's something exciting, Jeffrey. We are just 70 short days away from opening day. So let's talk the members of the Cincinnati Reds to wear the number 70. Before we get into any of that, let's shout out the sponsor of today's broadcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets back, guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. And where we are going to start today is talking about Jose Barrero. Jeff, I did a, I wrote an article over at InsideTheReds.com yesterday talking a little bit about Jose Barrero's journey and the predicament that he finds himself in. Uh, you know, he at one point in time was the number one Reds prospect in the system, Jeff. And and if nothing else, Jose Barrero, Nick Senzel, these are both cautionary tales in what can happen with a number one rated prospect, but also puts into perspective just how amazing 2023 was with prospect after prospect after prospect coming up and hitting and, and doing the thing. And we can look at Jose Barrero and, and have a case study in situations where things just go wrong. Jose Barrero was signed by the Cincinnati Reds in 2017 as an amateur free agent. Uh, he spent a couple years at uh, in single A, made the jump to Prasco Park. And many of you are like, wait, what? What's Prasco Park? Where Where's that minor league affiliate? As a reminder, in, in case you weren't really paying attention to the labels, in 2020, during the COVID season, Major League Baseball allowed each team to establish an alternate site in close proximity to swap players out during the COVID season. Uh, the Reds chose Prasco Park, and they were allowed to have a certain number of players there. And then the rest of minor league baseball shut down. So yeah. Jose Barrero was one of the guys. The Reds valued him so much that in 2020, he was one of the guys that got to go to Prasco and continue to play baseball and develop. And lo and behold, Jeff, he found his way onto the big league team that year. Uh, he made his major league debut in 2020, and it did not go well. If you recall, he was very clearly overmatched. Uh, he was way in over his head. The major league pitching just had his number, and ultimately his playing time on the big league roster dwindled because – Somewhere along the way, those Cincinnati Reds in 2020 caught fire and made a playoff push, actually making the playoff. If you recall, uh, that led to that debacle down in Atlanta. So Jose Barreau has had a journey from, you know, his early beginnings of learning baseball and playing baseball, his his signing by the Reds, his way through the minor league system, and then ultimately his major league debut, because I have to feel like that major league debut actually served as a setback. He's never quite been the same since he's had flashes. He's, he's played well, but after being sent back down after that 2020 season, he's never really put it together after that. He, I mean, we keep saying cautionary tale. I think that when you combine him with Nick Senzel, it just shows the, the absolute thin line that every organization walks with their top prospects as to how to put them in the best position to succeed. Barrero was thought of as, you know, obviously the top prospect in 2020, the, the best shortstop in organization prospect that they had at the time. And so they didn't want to stop his development. They didn't want to stop his clock. I don't believe that in 2020, they brought him to Prasco thinking, yes, we're going to call him up. You remember they had Freddie Galvis as their shortstop in 2020 and Freddie Galvis just he wasn't working out. 
but they also didn't really have any other options in their organization. So they're like, why not? Let's call up this kid. He's got a lot of talent. And I think they started that way too soon. He was not ready. It was very evident. And honestly, ever since then, he's kind of looked overmatched each year. And, and we were talking about this in prep. If you were to ask a, a, a Reds fan right now, how many years and in parts of seasons has Jose Barrero played? I don't think they'd realize it'd be four seasons. He has played in parts of four years. And let's look at this. This is uh, from baseball savant. This is his stats, the numbers, the peripherals, the metrics and things like that from the tenure, the time spent in the major leagues in his fourth season. He does not have any opposite field hits in 2023 didn't hit anything. I mean, he hit a couple of infield singles up the middle, but other than that, nothing up the middle of the field, everything was to the pool side. And then when you look at his, you know, uh, his, his meters, when it comes to expected statistics and barrel percentages and all that other stuff, there's red and there's blue. Red is good. Blue is bad. Way too much blue. And he just doesn't hit the ball hard at all. He doesn't make a lot of good contact. He improved when it came to walk percentage, but that was basically instead of swinging at bad pitches, he just stopped swinging altogether. And whenever he wasn't swinging very much, he wasn't making very much contact. And it's just been very disheartening to see that there has not really been that development, which sets up the fact that 2024 kind of feels like his last hurrah, especially when you factor in that he's going to be the last man on the bench. Well, he will be the last man on the bench. And as you say, he's been in now four big league seasons. He's out of options. There's nowhere for the Reds to stash him. There's nowhere for him to go. But he finds himself with an opportunity yet again. And the Reds have given him opportunity after opportunity. As the 26th man on this bench, he could still find his way into a lot of playing time. But the key behind it is for him to learn how to hit left-handed pitching. If he never really gets it together versus right-handed pitching, I don't care. But if he can learn to hit the left-handed pitching this spring, if he can come back having spent more time in the Dominican Winter League, didn't look really great there, although he had a really good playoff run, uh, if he can put together uh, batting against lefties, he can create an opportunity for himself. Career-wise, Jeff, his splits, not a lot of sample size. He's played in 76 games against left-handers. His slash line in those 76 games for his career in the majors 202, 262, 284. Those are not numbers to write home about, and those are not numbers that are going to earn you what his opportunity is, which is to be the right-handed bat in a platoon. Because we got guys in that outfield right now named Will Benson. We got guys in that outfield right now named Jake Fraley. Neither one of those dudes are going to get a lot of playing time against left-handed pitching. Jose Barrero brings you an athleticism to be able to really play all three outfield spots. He can play at third base. He can play at shortstop. He can play at second base. He's valuable if he can hit the lefties. Yeah. You can get him into the infield for late inning uh, defensive replacements or resting guys, getting him out of a game a little bit early and not have a fall off there. You can get him into any of those outfield spots when there's a lefty on the mound and it will help this team go if you put him down, you know, around eighth or ninth in the batting order. But but the key is the left-handed pitching, Jeff. I, I just, I can't see a role for him. And actually, if he doesn't demonstrate that he can hit left-handed pitching at least fairly consistently. I don't know that he finishes the season as the 26th man on this roster. There are going to be guys pressing him for that roster spot from spring training. And it's something too that I've said, and, and we've talked about this a lot off air, is that the Reds have replacement level players in AAA. They have guys that they can be like, look, if, if they're on the roster, we know what we're going to get out of them. It's not going to be great, but it's fine in a pinch. And I honestly think that Jose Barrera needs to be better than just replacement level to stick on with the team. Now, that's not to say that he is going to, you know, push for a starting spot anywhere. But like you said, he's got the opportunity to play against left handed pitching. If he showed that he can do that at a pretty decent clip, like honestly, Nick Senzel was pretty decent against left handed pitching last year. It's just overall, he was a replacement level player, so they could move on from him. If Jose Barrero proves that he is just a replacement level guy against right hand or against left handed pitching, I think they move on from him. And like we said, out of options, which means they're not sending him down to AAA. If they do, he has to be exposed to waivers. Does he get picked up by somebody? Maybe. 
but also, I mean, and we're talking about a guy, he's still only 25 years old. So there might be another franchise out there that says we can fix him. But when it comes to the reds, this is it. This is the, this is the, you got to prove it to us now if you want to stick with us later. And it, it just kind of feels like he's going to be very pigeonholed into facing lefties. And if he can't hit lefties, then there's no reason to throw him against right-handed pitching. And there's no reason really for him to stick on the roster. Even though it wasn't great, Jeff, just to leave this with a little glimmer of hope for him, uh, his 2023 campaign in 46 games, OPS plus of 67, that was his best OPS plus uh, for any of those four seasons that he was in the big league. So maybe he is starting to put it together. And not to, you know, I don't want to dog the guy too much because I really am rooting for him. I really want to see what he can do. If the 26 man on the Reds roster can be a viable part of the lineup in situations where they need him to be, then that's just going to help this team so much more. It's just what I've seen so far. I'm not going to get my hopes up right now for Barrero. But hey, if he can hit lefties, he could prove valuable to the Reds in 2024. You know, Baseball America released its top 100 prospect rankings, and there's one Red who made MLB Network's top 10 at a position. We're reacting to rankings coming up next. Before we get to that, today's episode is brought to you in part by Ibotta. The new year for many people means resolutions to save money. So stop shopping without getting anything in return. Start getting cash back on every purchase that you make with Ibotta. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, just add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and start earning cash back and use the code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play Store or App Store and use code LOCKEDONMLB. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Jace Medical. I know we come to sports to escape some of the crazy realities of life, but can we talk for just a minute about preparing for tough situations? Whether you're on extended travel, bracing for a major weather event, or limited by yet another supply shortage, Jace Medical has you covered. Thanks to them, life-saving antibiotics and a long list of daily medications can be ordered in a one-year supply, even ED generics for Cialis and Viagra. Jace Medical has the Jace case. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. Visit jacemedical.com to complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular costs. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use the promo code locked on to get $20 off your order. Again, that's Jace Medical, J A S E medical.com and the promo code locked on. Thanks as always for making Locked On Reds your first listen every single day to our everydayers out there. Thank you for being a part of the episode. And if you're not an everydayer, what are you doing? Make sure you hit that subscribe button, whether you're on YouTube or on your favorite podcasting app. And if you're on YouTube and you click that subscribe button, also hit the bell to get notified whenever we've got new content for you because we're coming at you every single day with Reds content all throughout the off season leading up to spring training. Speaking of content, Aloha Friday coming up tomorrow afternoon. It's going to be at 3 p.m. this time. We're usually at 2 p.m. This one's going to be at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Friday. Looking forward to talking some Reds baseball with you and letting you drive the ship and some Q&A time later on in the show. And before we jump into the rankings and all that such, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Make sure you check out Locked On Sports today because they're here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts like Steve and myself of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, Steve, we've got rankings, and we're going to start first with a big club because MLB Network gave out their top 10 MLB second baseman coming in at number 10. 
Maddie Bangs, Maddie McLean. Put the C, put the C on his chest, <laughs> Matt McLean. Listen, I tell you what, Jeff, I I love that folks outside of Cincinnati. Uh, and it has to be people outside of Cincinnati to drive a national list like this yes. are paying attention to Matt McLean. Uh, he continues to just be recognized for what he brought to this team last year. Well, you and I have talked all along that from the time he arrived in Denver, Colorado, when they called him up, the energy changed, the, the, the narrative started to change. And I really do think that Matt McLean was the driver of that. And he didn't even realize it when he was doing it. He just showed up and did his thing, and everybody instantly grabbed a hold of that. Everybody, everybody recognized that he was that blue collar, grinded out, gritty player that Cincinnati just loves to love, right? So for me, him making an appearance on this list, uh, it, it makes me happy that that he's going to he's starting his career rather with the recognition that I think he deserves, and people paying attention to to what he's doing, and that's just going to help him as as his career continues to grow. But I I, I think. His personality, I think his play style is infectious. It's something that the team can grab onto and follow. We saw, you know, what his absence meant for the team in the final month of the season, not being in the lineup. It really hurt them. And, and whenever he was Let me ask gone, you this, that thought, if he wasn't hurt to end the season, if he oh, was healthy, the oh, they make that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's the, I agree Easy, easily. Cause there were a couple of games there where you're just like, man, they're like one or two runs away here. And I, I definitely think they make the playoffs. And I think that he is the kind of guy, as long as he is healthy, this team is going to be absolutely in every game. I also think it's a little bit telling. There's two things about this, about the ranking that are telling to me. Number one, they've already done their shortstop rankings and Ellie did not make it. Now he's still got some stuff to prove before. I think that he deserves to be in the top 10, but he's definitely got the talent to be one of the best shortstops in the game. But I think it's interesting that they've already noticed Matt McClain's talent and given him this top 10 ranking. And the other thing that it's interesting to me is he's ranked as a second baseman because he's going to play both. He's going to play shortstop. He's He might even play a little bit of third. Who knows? But I know that th they're marking him down as a second baseman because they know he's going to get the lion's share of the playing time there, which is interesting for a certain second baseman who's going to arbitration with the team. You are right. Uh, I hope uh, Jonathan India is working on those routes in the outfield, my friend. Uh, yeah. Some uh, other, yeah. Some other lists, Jeff. Baseball America released its top 100 prospect ranking. And guess what, Jeff? Three. One, two, three. Cincinnati Reds make an appearance in the top 100. I love it. And actually, the number one prospect for the Reds is uh he moved up quite a bit noel v Marte still on prospect rankings didn't play enough major league games to get knocked off of prospect rankings or things like that he is still rookie of the year eligible for this season which is why i'm picking him to win rookie of the year but he actually began the year began 2023 on the top 100 prospect list for baseball america at number 63 this year he starts at number 23, almost a top 20 prospect for the Reds. Then on uh, the second position, they have a draft pick from last year. Rhett Louder is the second Red to be in the top 100. He, he is at number 60. And then the third Red to make a appearance in Baseball America's top 100 list is actually not any other player that was on the list last year. It was Connor Phillips, Connor Phillips at number 78. He was not in the top 100, uh, at least preseason last year for the Reds. It's, it's kind of interesting to note that because we saw flashes of talent from him last year after he was called up. And I think that people are grabbing onto the upside, hoping for more of that this season. I would be, I, I think I label him a dark horse to make this rotation. I don't expect him to be in the rotation out of spring training, but I definitely think we'll see plenty of starts from him this season. I, I really like Connor Phillips. Listen, when I had him on and interviewed him, you know, he did not disguise the fact that he was a little upset about the negative, the negative talk that surrounds him and right. the, the negative, the negative comments about his pitching performances. And, and he did a good job, I think, of, of explaining why he had problems at times. And I, I look for him to come back really strong in 2024. I, I do want to talk about Rhett Louder for a second because I'm starting to get a little concerned. And, and here's why. We're starting to drift into that Hunter Green lane. That lane where we set expectations so so high that the player can't 
possibly achieve what we're expecting them to do. Mm -hmm. Everybody's starting to talk about Rhett Lauder showing up in Cincinnati in 2024 and being the, the great savior of the rotation and being the, the, the next Cy Young or, or, or whatnot. And I think we need to slow our roll. I really think the smartest play with Rhett Lauder, and I want to just start banging this drum, Jeff, is that they tell him straight out that he will not see the major leagues in 2024. They need to let him work on being a professional. They need to let him work on pitching a full season against professionals. They need to let him figure out his mechanics and figure out what he wants to change and tweak and adjust. That can't be done in Cincinnati in year one. And I really have a problem with, with this thought that he's going to be in the big league rotation at some point in time this year. I want the Reds to force him to slow his roll a little bit. Yeah, and and I, I agree with that. And in fact, you mentioned this with Matt McClain. I mean, coming from Baseball America, this is outside of Cincinnati. This is people recognizing the talent on this team. We continue to see people count Rhett Louder into the plans for this year, like saying that he is going to be part of this rotation. I definitely don't want people to get this idea he's going to be there on opening day. He's not going to be there on opening day. It's going to be at best case scenario, like July, I would think. And I don't even think that's, I think that's still too early. I think that's like a bold prediction to say that we would see Rhett Louder in the major leagues in July. I think it's more like August, September, something like that. They want to make sure that he is comfortable. And I, I think they're going to let him kind of figure some stuff out. On the top 100 notes, uh, Ellie De La Cruz was actually number eight last season, pre preseason. Obviously, he uh, graduated from that list. Interesting to note, Edwin Arroyo and Cam Collier both on last year's top 100 list. They have completely fallen off. Uh, Edwin Arroyo was number 65 and Cam Collier was number 70. And I don't want to get into this today. I know I have it in our notes, but I want to talk about it more on the live show tomorrow because Baseball America has the top 10 Reds organization list and Cam Collier is at number 10. 10. I, I think that there are some people that have seen his performance and wonder a little bit about his future. It'll be interesting to kind of see how his year goes. And the same for Edwin Arroyo. There were a lot of questions about the bat and things like that. We'll have to see how all of that develops this year, but kind of interesting to note that the Reds had three guys come off the top 100 list, but two of them were just because they are now ranked lower than they were last year. Well, it's definitely exciting to see, Jeff, that people outside of Cincinnati that don't live inside the 275 loop are paying attention to the prospects and the young talent that the Reds are amassing. All right, coming up, there are just 70 short days remaining until opening day in Cincinnati. I can't wait. My ticket's booked already, Jeff. Coming up, we're going to celebrate 70 by talking about the best Reds to ever wear that number. We've got that next. Today's episode is brought to you in part by FanDuel. There is still time for you to get in on the NFL action and put some money in your pocket with the remaining playoff games over at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets back with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 in your pocket, or at least in your account, if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action than right now. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including playing the point spreads, money lines, player props, over-unders. You know, Jeff Carr has never met an over he didn't love, and so many ways to play. You can also combine prop bets into single-game parlays for even more fun looking ahead the FanDuel has the Reds at 45 to 1 to win the National League Central take it take it it's going to be good easy money you will thank me later to get in on the action just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start turning your sports knowledge into cash FanDuel the official partner of the National Football League and the official sports book of locked on you can follow us in between episodes on the social medias. Uh, Jeff's over on TikTok. I am not going anywhere near that. But remember, if you get him to 1,000 subscribers on his TikTok, he's dancing through Great American Ballparks Concourse in 2024. You can also follow us on X. You can follow him at Jeff Carr. That's Jeff with three Fs. You can follow me at S. Offenbaker with two Fs. And you can follow the show at Locked on Reds. There's no Fs in that. Also, if you haven't done so, bookmark insidethereds.com. Jeff's writing over there about the Reds. I'm writing over there about the Reds. James Rapine, Audie Elmore, Rick Uccino, good crowd of writers over there. 
covering this Cincinnati Reds team in written form. Also, visit our Discord community. If you're not a member there, you're missing out. Uh, we talk Reds over there. We talk Bengals. There's off-topic channels. We, we question David Bell's decision-making. Lots of things happen on the Discord server, and we would love to talk baseball with you over there. The link for that down in today's episode description. All right, 70 days away from opening day. And as a side note, it is official. Pitchers and catchers reporting February 14th. So cancel those Valentine's plans. Uh, spring training is not that far away, Jeff. But opening day, 70 days away. And there's been a few members of the Cincinnati Reds to sport the number 70. I'm going to take the first one because it's one of my favorite feel goods that the Reds have done over the years. Number 70 making one appearance for the Cincinnati Reds and going one for three in his professional career, Stephen Larkin, brother of Barry. That was a fun day at Great, Amer or Great American Ballpark. Fun day at Riverfront Stadium. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Fun day out at Riverfront Stadium where Barry Larkin and Stephen Larkin were on the infield, as were Brett and Aaron Boone, two pairs of brothers playing the infield for the Reds that day. And, and those are the kind of stories that you find throughout baseball that just, you know, they don't really mean anything statistically. They don't have any impact on a playoff race. They don't have any impact on the wins and the losses, but they're just fun. Yeah. There's, there's things like that, that it, it just lets you know that it's a game, right? It's, it's, it's a fun game that you get to watch and get to enjoy and, there's kind of like a moment where like you feel like it's a family affair or something like that. And I feel like sometimes we tend to uh, overplay that, but I, I, I love it. I love this little, the little storied aspect of that. Um, as far as the best number 70 goes, we've got a couple of guys that honestly, I think the, the consensus on all three of these guys outside of Stephen Larkin is, I needed to see more. I wanted to see more. I mean, you have Matt Belisle, Jumbo Diaz, and TJ Antone. Like, I still want to see more of TJ Antone. Yep. Uh, and he has made it clear whether, you know, signing a deal to avoid arbitration or, you know, the videos that he's posting on Instagram, he's made it clear that he wants to come back. He wants to pitch for the Reds this season. Jumbo Diaz, maybe I don't want to see more. I think we saw all we needed to see out of him. Um, and Matt Belisle was a better player after leaving the Reds. He was a better pitcher for Colorado. He was a better pitcher for Atlanta. So I just, he's, it's kind of hard to pick him, but it's also kind of hard to say that TJ Antone's the best number 70 before he does more things. But I think that's definitely how we're leaning here, right? That's, that's where I land. I, I think TJ Antone's the best player to wear it thus far. Uh, yeah. And if he continues to pitch and improve, uh, he's going to just improve that vote. But if you're voting from this group and their body of work, I think he's pretty much hands down the best guy to have worn number 70 for the Reds. I will say this about Jumbo Diaz. Anytime the Cincinnati Reds have a player on the roster that gives me the opportunity that when I pull a jersey in the grab, grab bag, that it improves my self body image, <laughs> I am all for it. And yeah. if you pulled a Jumbo Diaz jersey, you are swimming in it. Let me it, tell you. So that makes me happy to have those kind of guys. That's why I'm such a fan of Ian Jabot. There's an opportunity yeah. for me to get a jersey that's going to make me look like I have lost weight. <laughs> and I think, too, like there's this aspect of baseball, like we talk about with the, you know, the brothers and things like that, that's pretty cool. But there's this other aspect of baseball for guys like us that are like, hmm, hmm, his body type. He's not like overly athletic. It doesn't look like he's been in the gym since he was in high school. Looks like he's a pretty normal guy, right? Like, I think quote I can handle Collinsworth, that. To quote, quote Collinsworth, you're like, now here's a guy that looks like he could fall off the rowing machine at Orange Theory. Now here's a guy. Looks like he was sitting next to me at Skyline earlier today. And, hey, look at that. He's, he's out here throwing 95 miles an hour. Maybe I could do that. Now, of course I can. I don't think I could hit 65 on a radar gun, but let alone 95. But, no, it's 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 things like that. And, and it, one of the reasons why I've always been a big fan of current New York Met Daniel Vogelbach, and even when he was a pirate, I've always been like, hey, that guy, he can hit the ball a country mile. Maybe, maybe I could do, even though I really can't. <laughs> well, I know this. You guys could run the bases similarly. Oh, yeah. I might be able to beat him in a race. 
Eh, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Probably Jumbo Diaz as well. But no, 70 days away from opening day. Really excited. I mean, gosh, can't be more excited for opening day, man. Can't. And, can't. and let's wrap up with something fun because it just came across my feed right before we clicked record. Uh, we were talking about lists, Jeff, and player rankings. But I wonder if you know who in Major League Baseball, as far as rankings go, is the current career active hits leader in all of major league baseball mike trout that is not correct sir is it joey Votto? it's joseph daniel hey. Votto. just edging out freddie freeman those numbers probably flop in the 2024 season with freddie freeman taking the lead but for right now free agent first baseman slash designated hitter joseph daniel Votto leads all of baseball with hits Put that in your overvalued contract pocket. And I think, and, and you know what? I think that uh, ending on a good Joey Votto note is a way to get end a good show. Thanks so much for checking out today's Lockdown Reds podcast. If you are not an everydayer, become an everydayer. Hit that subscribe button and click the like button. That helps the algorithm here on YouTube and, and folks can find it and it'll show up on their feeds and all that other stuff. So make sure you do that and make sure you join us tomorrow for our live Aloha edition of the podcast as we are talking about a couple of different things and something that uh, I just remember we teased last Friday and we haven't gotten to yet. We're going to get to on the Aloha Friday episode, the invites to spring training that are very intriguing to see that's coming up on tomorrow's locked on reds. Aloha live edition of the podcast. We'll see you then because why Steve we're monitoring those invites. We're monitoring the rumors. We're paying attention to what's coming out of the front office. We're gathering it all up, bringing it back right here to keep you, Locked on Reds every single day. Who's your favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, Steve? I just like the pizza. <laughs> <laughs>